Okay, this video is going to be about finding areas and polar coordinates. And to me, I think the tricky thing about these problems for most people, uh, myself included, because I don't do them that often, is coming up with a decent graph and finding the limits of integration. So, um, again, remember things in polar coordinates, certainly the graphs are a little different, but suppose this is my graph r equals f of theta. Again, where theta is our angle, r is the radius or the distance you go out from the origin. Um, the thing that you integrate is pretty easy. You just take one half of the function squared. The parts to me that are that are usually a little more complicated are finding the limits of integration. And in this case, again, the limits of integration correspond not to these rectangular intervals like when we do normal integration, but now um, our limits of integration are going to be angles. Okay, so suppose the it starts at the angle theta equals a and goes to the angle theta equals b. Those are going to be my limits of integration. So let's do one simple example. Um, in another video, I'm going to do one where you've got to find areas enclosed by two different curves. So this will certainly be the more simple of the two. It says find the area enclosed by one loop of r equals sine 4 theta. OK, so I'm going to try to come up with a decent little graph. I already know that it's um, going to be 1 half, and I have to integrate sine of 4 theta. This is the function I have to square. So there's the square, d theta. Now the only thing I really have to work for, um, at least in this simple example again, are the limits of integration. The way that I do this, um, you know, kind of a quick way that helps me find um, the graph of this thing, is what I'll do is I like to figure out for what theta values does the radius equal zero. So really, for me, to help me get a graph. I'm just plotting points. I like to solve this equation. Okay, so I want I want the I want to know what values of theta I get a radius of zero out. Well if you think about it, sine of well let's see zero would equal zero. Normally um, so forget about the fact that there's four theta here. If the four theta wasn't here, we the values we would like to have on the inside would be 0, pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, 5 pi, etc. Sine of those angles equals 0, but obviously we're going to have to tweak that a little bit because of this 4 out front. Well, what it says again is we would like the inside, the 4 theta, I would like that to either equal 0, or pi, or 2 pi, or 3 pi, etc. When this happens, that's when I'm going to get sine of those corresponding angles um, giving me a radius value of 0. So this is going to happen then, well, you can imagine dividing both sides by 4. This is going to happen at the angle theta equals 0, pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, etc. So really what I'm doing is I'm just plotting points. You know, here's theta, here's r. So now I know it's 0, pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, etc. I know that for these angles that the radius is always going to be 0. So <clears throat> why do I do that? Well, it tells me then when the angle of theta is 0, it says my radius value is 0. So I'm just sitting right here. Okay, so now let's think what happens. As So I'm really now thinking about the interval. I'm thinking about theta values between 0 and pi over 4. Um, okay, the angle pi over 4 is going to be this angle. So here's theta equals pi over 4. Again, the angle theta equals 0, that would just correspond to our x-axis. Notice as theta increases, um, our value well, 4 theta will increase. Sine for a little bit will start getting bigger, bigger, and bigger. I think you can justify that at pi over 8, you're going to be at its maximum distance away. So once we get out to an angle of pi over 8, which is halfway between, well, pi over 4 and the angle 0, it'll be at its maximum distance. And then as theta increases from pi over 8 to pi over 4, sine is going to start decreasing, and it gets pulled back into this value of 0. Okay, so basically I'm finding my limits of integration by doing this, is what I do. So again, this is kind of a quick little synopsis of graphing, you know, uh, graphing polar curves. So again, um, I think that part can be pretty tricky. So 
Um, to me as a student that's the part that I certainly spent more time on was just the graphing because again I think once I got that the limits of integration come from that okay so alright so I think we've got it now our lower limit of integration is going to correspond to theta equals zero our upper limit of integration is going to correspond to theta equals pi over four and now all I have to do is integrate away so we're gonna have to use one little identity here remember there's an identity it says sine squared of theta equals one half one minus cosine of two theta so to integrate uh, sine squared four theta equivalently I can write sine squared of well four times theta that's going to be one half of one minus cosine of notice it says whatever theta is on the left you double it on the right we have four theta here so I'm going to get eight theta here Okay, so this is the identity I'm going to use on the sine squared of 4 theta part to, to kind of break it up. Okay, so when I integrate, I'm going to pull my original 1 half out front. So there's the 1 half that just comes from the formula. And now when I use my trig identity on the sine squared 4 theta, I'm going to get all this stuff. I'm going to get 1 half, 1 minus cosine of 8 theta, d theta. And again, we have to integrate this simply from 0 to the value pi over 4. So, okay, so now it's just tedious integration. I'm going to multiply the two 1 halves and get a fourth. If I, integ if I integrate 1, I'm going to get theta. The antiderivative of cosine 8 theta is going to be sine of 8 theta over 8. You could justify that using a u substitution. Um, we have to evaluate this from 0 to pi over 4, so let's go ahead and do that real quick. Again, we're finding areas here, so you know you better get something positive out or something went wrong. Um, let's see here. Okay, so let's plug everything in. So we're going to have 1 fourth. I'll plug in pi over 4. I'll have to subtract away the sine of 8 times pi over 4. Again, that's all being divided by 8. There's my upper limit of integration. Um, and then we'll have to subtract away the lower limit. So if I plug in 0, I'm just going to get 0. Notice on the inside, 8 times 0 will be 0. Um, we know that sine of 0 is 0. So the lower limit um, just turns into zeros. So we're almost there. Pi over 4 is just chilling. Um, notice 8 pi over 4, that's 2 pi. Um, so really we get sine of 2 pi divided by 8, but likewise uh, sine of 2 pi is just equal to 0. So if we multiply, it looks to me like we get the value pi over 16. Alright, so I hope this video made some sense. Um, again, I've got videos on graphing polar curves definitely spend a little more time and go a little more in depth on those um, so you may want to take a look at that if the graphing was a bit fast for you I'm gonna do another more complicated example again where you find the area trapped between two polar curves and then the trick is basically again just coming up with a graph and finding uh, points of intersection but feel free to post comments and questions um, if there's any that you have and hopefully somebody can point you in the right direction, um, if not me. So, all right, um, once again, I hope this helps, and good luck out there.